<laughs> well, that's interesting. Uh, even now, like, so I've been working with it 18 years, as you know, and um, it's a really difficult question to answer still relative to what it does and how it works. But generally, it's the basic description is that it's a psychoactive tea, which is what it is, because there's two plants combined that only work in synergy together, which is really interesting. And um, it consistently, the mystery of it is that it consistently causes what we call spiritual experiences or really deep um, introspective, um, what would you call it, like psychological exploration. Uh, you can really get into the psyche with ayahuasca that you, in a way that you can't with any other entheogen or even substance that I'm aware of. When I got introduced to ayahuasca 18 years ago through the Santo Daime Church, which is again the ayahuasca church that um, started in Brazil, and a uh, friend invited me to participate in one of those ceremonies. And my first thought, I remember like the weeks following the ceremony, it was really powerful. But I thought, well, this is really awesome, but I don't want to keep doing this because I'm concerned about my psychological, you know, and mental well being. And uh, a lot of people have that concern, you know. But shortly thereafter, I read a, a uh, study that they had done in Brazil, which was part of his legalization process there. And they researched people that had been drinking like regularly, like twice a month for like almost like over a 30 year period. And not only were they completely healthy, they were healthier and smarter. They tested higher cognitively over this period of time, you know. So at that point, I thought, well, that's it, because I'm really interested in this medicine and I'm going to study it. You know, and for me, it's like, yeah, 18 years later, I am definitely a smarter person in terms of being more conscious and um, the ability to uh, be centered in one's own being, I would call it. And to assimilate information um, has definitely improved, you know, in my life. And I've watched so many people go through this amazing curve, you know, of coming in wounded in various ways, either like physically or traumatically, you know, psychologically. And within like a year of on and off again, going to South America, wherever they're finding access to the medicine, it's profound, the transformation. Yeah. So at some point I thought, that's it. I want to dedicate myself to at least being an advocate, you know. You know, I'd been drinking ayahuasca, and I wanted to understand that more. And from that, I had the most obvious epiphany. I thought, well, gosh, actually, all of the problems humanity is facing are stemming from a lack of connection, if you look at it really. And a lack of connection spiritually or a lack of a sense of connection to um, our greater environment, basically, and to each other. And I thought, so the real problem we're facing, the evolution that needs to take place is in consciousness. And I thought, well, that's it. That's where I'm going to do my work. So for me, my work with the advocacy and support of entheogenic use is a form of activism, without a doubt. The evolution of human consciousness, my entire life shifted so that everything I do from music to working with young people is all around the evolution of human consciousness, period. Yeah. Because it, it shows you this very clear distinction between the truth of who you are, right? Your, I wouldn't want to call that, like your eternal state of actual presence and being versus this... Um, program that we're all running on, which is really all the ego is. It's kind of this downloaded, programmed, I call it a survival tool, basically, which is necessary, you know. If, you, if we didn't have an ego, we would like step in front of a train, you know, or allow ourselves to be a doormat, you know, and just be taken advantage of. So fortunately, we do have this mechanism that is all about self-preservation, you know, that kicks in regardless of your thought process and basically preserves your physical existence, I think. But with that, in Western culture particularly, I get really all over the world, but I think Western culture is the dominant now culture, you know, um, exported all over the world. Um, the eagle now looks like um, capitalism run amok, basically, fake forms of democracy, you know, and it looks like over-identification with fundamentalist anything, you know, um, whether it's Christianity or a political doctrine. You know, I find all of those to be manifestations of ego. And uh, I got introduced to this concept of self-inquiry. And within the Avaita tradition, what they say is, you know, when you reach this level of spiritual study, it's, it's considered the last teaching. It's the last study. Because basically you transcend the need to be in a study outside of yourself. The whole study is self-inquiry. It's actually looking within and looking at your own experience and being able to trust that just through observation, right, and tapping into... Um, this really present state of awareness, you can actually see exactly what's going on in any given moment in a situation. You can actually look at the world and, and you know, be, um, trust yourself to analyze what's going on around you and be able to cognize that in a way that makes sense to you. That You could actually do an analysis, basically. Um, 
I'm, I'm very westernizing these teachings. Um, but I got that through ayahuasca. I started to understand like it actually all is about self-inquiry. 